So growing up, I probably put maybe 10,000 to 50,000 hours of my entire childhood into a little game you might have heard of called Minecraft. It was sort of all the rage when I was in middle school and I got into it because I had these friends who had their own Minecraft servers that were economy servers, they were townie servers. That was only a small percentage, that's like what got me into it, but probably about 90% of all of the hours I've ever put into Minecraft have been in one server. It's like the biggest economy server I think probably ever, which is called Eco City Craft, okay? This is not sponsored by them, but if you've played it or you've heard of it, I was on it <laughs> for a very long time. The point of this is sort of this concept of embracing the inner child, okay? Like a lot of people on TikTok, especially during the pandemic, were really all about like, how can I embrace my inner child and make my inner child happy? And I have been the kind of person as I've gone into adolescence to be like, um, F my inner child, <laughs> they suck. Uh, I was a, a snot nosed little brat. Like I, I have never, looked back on myself as a child fondly okay i am under the impression that if i met me as a child i would like punch her um and then be like you're gay by the way Ooh. and see what happens you know but i've been trying to i have been trying to recently um ask myself why i have this tendency to cringe at my own interests <laughs> that i was like raised on as a kid and try and combat combat that part of myself that sort of deep shame i have for being a child at any point because we were all children so it's pretty much okay to be a kid um and to look back instead of with malice or cringing at what i was into and instead embrace it as something that shaped me right and so a big one of those has been dragon ball which i was like totally embarrassingly obsessed with as a kid and i still hold a place in my heart right so that's sort of idea but another one of those big things was minecraft i'm like less cringe about liking minecraft because minecraft is still fun and it's always been fun it might not be cool like i might be a dork but it's been pretty fun uh and it's something that i can still play with my brother to this day my little brother he's he's very little but um it's something that is cross-generational now so i'm not like well it's cringe that i like minecraft what is cringe is the hundreds of dollars and thousands of hours I've spent on one server, okay? And I have gone back to this server a couple of times in my life, but I'm gonna start with the beginning, okay? We're gonna go through the story. I'm gonna set the scene. It's maybe 2012 or something, like the peak of this server's popularity. I'm a little kid and I am putting in so many hours of hard manual labor in this Minecraft server. How it works is you start uh, with the bottom rank, obviously builder, and you wanna just earn money to rank up. And as you rank up, you get new things, right? So a builder, you basically have no rights. <laughs> you are a pleb and you can do essentially nothing. You can still spend money on things. Like the rank doesn't preclude you from participating in the free market. Um, hashtag capitalism win, but it is, it comes with like no rights. Um, and then, so once you earn your first 15,000 eco dollars or in-game dollars through whatever means, uh, nowadays, if you go on the server, most people will just help you out and give you a free plot of land in their town to just get you started because the game is kind of like not popular anymore <laughs> or the server. So uh, the people who still play are, are like old souls who have the money who can just help you out. But um, in the beginning, it was, or at the height of the popularity of the game, it was much harder to find someone who would be so generous as to throw pennies and dimes at you. So I had to just work. And so the way you can do that is by um, mining in the building world or whatever, where you can just grieve or whatever, and there's no laws, so that you can earn money to get plots of land or farm perms in like the main world so if you pay for perms like permissions at a farm then that will enable you enable you to spend however long you want basically just farming and you can just sell whatever you farm to the server for like pennies or you can sell what you uh 
farm to people in the server who will buy it but typically if you're farming in giant quantities unless you're selling to like a multi-billionaire or a millionaire nobody is going to be able to buy the quantities that you can farm uh so you're just going to sell to the server and there are certain crops that are worth more than others and there are tools that you can use and there's this whole farming economy <laughs> of this server um but essentially you can just farm things or mine things and that's how you make money it's sort of very straightforward and so i would sit there as a kid and build little tiny farms like little tiny 10 by 10 farms with a couple levels on on my plots that i owned in certain towns right and i would just sit there and farm them sell my hand then wait for them to grow then farm them then sell them and i the way that i would expand my business is by buying more plots in different towns and building more farms on those plots right so i didn't typically get permissions to larger farms because there weren't a ton at the time uh the main benefit was to either get your own town that you can build a farm on or to end up in a town where there's some sort of public farm lot nowadays if you play on the server there are mega farms that have <laughs> like dozens of levels on the full 200 by 200 plot and so that's a much easier way to farm is if you just find one of those and buy perms or there's free ones too now but like i said back in the day it was much harder <laughs> and so i would sit there and farm for hours and hours and hours and i would like stay up even though it was a school night i'd have my laptop under my sheets and i'd just be sitting there farming <laughs> like just farming not doing anything else not listening to anything else i would just farm like if nowadays if i do that and when i did that i have to have something up on the other monitor i'm like a ipad baby or one of those tiktok videos where it's the gameplay at the bottom and then a reddit story on top like i 21 f uh found my boyfriend 23 f uh cheating on me with a uh, peanut or something like it you know one of those tiktoks like that's how it has to be but back then it was just me staring at that screen farming for hours i have always been willing to put in the manual labor in games like you can refer to my hobo hotel <laughs> journey video as well where that's another game where i just sit there and put in hours and hours of manual labor because i had nothing better to do i was a kid you know i that was my job in my little brain like the the children yearn for the minds that is a joke that's low-key true like i'm sure as a kid i would have loved some manual labor I would just sit there and do this for hours and hours and hours. I would grind. Uh, Sigma grind said I was ahead of the curve, but now I don't have time for that is the thing. So when I was little, I would have these grand ideas. Okay. That was my thing in these games is I would have, I would get the town and I would have like a vision of what I wanted to achieve in this town. It had to be whatever grand thing I was working towards and that's why I could grind for hours and hours and hours. So the first time I finally was able to afford my own town uh, literally took me years, years of playing this server to be able to afford my own town. I built a little farming town. I think it was called Fairwood and it was gonna be like Fairwood Farms, like a little cute, kind of mid medieval-y, kind of not farming village, okay? So a lot of people, typically when you have a town, you can, for the same price, you can either get a 200 by 200 town or a 100 by 100. And nobody gets the 100 by 100 because why would you when you can have four times the land for the same price? And so what people would typically do is they'd flatten the town and they would just build a grid of like however many 10 by 10 plots they could fit and just sell them. First person comes along, 5,000 eco dollars. Here you go. You, you're now a resident of this town. Welcome. We're happy to have you. <laughs> but I was more interested in curating an experience as a kid, which I think is pretty funny because I'm like that now too. But I thought, well, you know what? I'm a farmer, so I'm going to build a farm. Um, and there's going to be some plots on it that you can buy, but they're not going to be just like you walk in and build whatever no 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 i don't trust these people to build cute little houses so i will build the houses i will build an experience for you to enjoy and um they're gonna be expensive because i built them and you're getting a lot of farm um but they're gonna be beautiful and worth it right and so that's what i was thinking as a kid and the truth is is that um looking back they weren't very exceptionally beautiful and they also the town like farm itself 
was far from impressive, okay? I built a wheat farm on the top because I thought it was the prettiest. But the truth is that wheat is not was not like the crop that everybody was farming, right? It was not sought after. It's just what I thought was prettiest. Or maybe it was also something that I enjoyed farming at the time. But most people on that server are historically and still to this day either pumpkin or melon farmers depending on the price that fluctuates of pumpkin or melon. Because the tools that you can buy on that server are best for pumpkin or melon farming. So nobody who was a farmer, like a hardcore farmer, was going to want to live here because they're not getting any bang for their buck because it wasn't even a full 100 by 100 wheat farm. It wasn't even that because there was a, a section taken out for like the houses that I built. I then expanded and added another whole level of farm underneath. And I think that was divided among sugarcane and I put some nether ward and maybe some pumpkin and melon. But it's still not enough to justify my houses, which uh, were up market price, like 10,000 eco dollars for a house that was not even that cute and not very big. <laughs> Looking back, I can understand the consumer value was not very high. In terms of my goals for that initial town, they were pretty straightforward in terms of building and I had achieved them. And I was so proud of my little village. But the thing that I could never foster was a community of people who were interested in joining in that little vision with me. And so that felt kind of sad because I thought it was such a cute goal and an aim. But the thing is that when you're in an economy server, people are really much more interested in making money and in becoming economically successful than I was willing to. Like it wouldn't hurt to be rich, but it was never my goal to sit there and be a millionaire. But a lot of these people, who are playing, we're playing to get rich, right? Because if you're just trying to play a peaceful cooperative server, then you that's something you do not on an economy server probably, but this server was all that I knew. And I liked the economy aspect of it in terms of participating. As a pleb, I was having fun being a proletariat <laughs> on this economy server. It's like real life, right? When I eventually stopped playing finally, for whatever reason, I started playing other games because I was a teenager and uh, I, I guess, Minecraft economy servers just weren't gay enough for me at the time, so I needed to go into something more more my speed. Eventually, though, I did get this hankering to play the game again uh, in my late teens, okay? Because I had remembered all those hours of joy, in my mind, of playing this game and going up the ranks. And it had been years, so they had reset my... or the whole server, so my town was gone. That was okay, because the way that I have historically tended to play games is I will play until I get frustrated or until it's done and then I'm done and I will not revisit that same state that I left it in. I, I tended to go in fresh. So for me going back years later I was like okay let's start over and see how it is and the, what actually catalyst catalyzed this was that I was playing with friends again and my friends and I wanted to play Minecraft so I was like I know a little server we can hop on if you guys want to play economy and they were just farting around having fun you know not very high stakes but I played and it like rushed back into me all of this like spirit of the server and of playing on this server for so many years that I was like I should I should get into this again because I've always liked being addicted really addicted to a game or a project or whatever i i enjoy the rush of that addiction of wanting to come back and honestly it has been so long since i have felt that way about a game i mean like yeah i'm like oh i want to play this but it's not like the drive that i felt as a child like it was like a single-minded like this is what i'm doing with my life right now is this but right now there's just too much going on you know between jobs and school and you know having a social life None of these things are what I had before, so I can't really get into games like how I used to. And that was also true during this like late teens phase of joining it, but I wanted to do something quicker. Like I didn't have the time for manual labor, but I knew I wanted to make something big. And so I started out with this grandiose plan in my head. I was like, I'm going to make, if people want an entrepreneurial, efficient sort of town, then I'll make the biggest one. I will buy this 200 by 200 plot i'll call it craft right because all of the coolest most cloudiest cloutiest towns had like one word warps like you could warp to certain locations you could just do slash whatever so like slash farm slash town these were like the big towns right if they have a one word warp and that's still how it works on like 
like Neopets trading. Like if you wanted um, to trade a valuable pet, its name has to be like Queef or something, you know, like one one little word. Um, but anyway, so that's how it was here as well. And so I thought I'm going to get a town and I'm going to call it Craft and I'm going to make the most efficient town I possibly can. It's going to be from bedrock to the sky limit, just farms, right? Just peak efficiency farms. And then on the top level, I will just have like a f like a town. You could, uh, on the top level, you could sell stuff. There'd be a shop, there'd be a marketplace. You can maybe buy stalls to like put your stuff down, like high efficiency, high density, like homes you could buy, but all of the rest of it would be farms. And so I was like, period, people of course would like to buy that. And I remember years ago having that idea, even when I had like fair or whatever it was called, I made a call to investors, but because I was a child and had no friends, um, obviously nobody's gonna invest. So this time I was like, I'll just do it myself. So I grind for much less time to get this town because I'm basically an adult at this point. So I understand how to play Minecraft better than when I was a kid and how to be more efficient. Um, and I managed to get this town. But the problem was that it was so much more work than I was willing to admit. Even though I had great tools and I had the donation that allowed me to like repair my tools. It just took so much time that I didn't have that maybe I would have had if I was a kid, but I did not have that time anymore. So I even tried to like hire some builders in the game to come in and help me out and stuff. But even with their help, it was like expensive. I couldn't afford to do that to the whole town. So I tried to just do it with a 30 by 30 section, which I did get to bedrock, but I was like, this sucks. And so eventually I just stopped playing, right? But I had the town, I had the resources theoretically I just didn't have the time so I kind of gave up because it became a little frustrating for me to realize how much time and money this was going to take in the game so I said mm, never mind and then I moved on with my life more recently yet again my friends were like let's play Minecraft and every time I play Minecraft I fall into the cycle where I go in and I'm like I want to be a successful um rich person in this server or I want to do something in this server and so yet again when my friends wanted to play Minecraft I was like mm, I'm gonna play Eco City Craft again and we're talking like this year is when this happened right so I'm an adult I'm basically a grown-up <laughs> right and I am sitting here playing Minecraft and I open up the server and it of course is reset again since the last time I played so craft is gone um but when I get on it seems like the whole culture has shifted because Minecraft right now is less popular than probably it's ever been uh, since its peak. And so the people who are playing, like I said, are like old veterans of this server who are just totally gracious and they give me a free plot uh, as a builder, not knowing that I have 10 years of experience almost on this game, right? Or on this server. Uh, I just show up like anybody else my rank is the lowest but I go in and I I remember some things and I managed to actually by a stroke of luck playing with another friend happen upon like a server-wide event because now that everybody's not playing Minecraft anymore they're doing all sorts of extra things to try and keep people engaged so we show up at an event and it's like a maze thing and I end up winning like 300,000 in-game eco dollars and I was like oh <laughs> cheat code <laughs> and instantly buy a town, right? And so here's the vision for the town because I wanted to combine some of the inspiration from being both economic. Well, no, I didn't care about the economics at all. I was like trying to be more realistic about this. I have been trying to alter my mindset about how I play games recently in that instead of being like, um, I need to meet a goal. I'm trying to think about the journey. And this is revolutionary to me because I'm sure a lot of people who play games play them because they're like well it's fun right it's sort of inherently fun to play a video game or it should be anyway um but for me gaming like this has always been more stressful right so yes it's fun to achieve goals and stuff obviously that's like the basis for how i was playing but i was like why am i sitting here holding myself at unrealistic standards and unrealistic expectations i have no time to play this game so my i'm gonna set a a big goal if i want it but I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm going to be try. I'm going to try and be less of a hard ass about it, right? I'm going to just try and have fun and enjoy the journey. And that's something that I did not do previously, right? The labor was a means to an end, but now I was going to approach it like 
I'm doing this for me and for fun and to try and make something that little me would be proud of, okay? So here's the story of this town, okay? Which is fundamentally, <laughs> I started off on the wrong foot, okay? Um, I applied for this town. Pumpkin Vale, okay, it was the name that I went with. The concept is that it's like fall themed. It's gonna be like a, like an experience town. So rather than being like the craft vision where it'd be like totally efficient economical powerhouse, it would just be like a nice village, right? And so it was like Farmwood in that, but that it would be actually nice, right? Because <laughs> now I am probably a better designer and artist, I would hope, than when I was 12. Uh, so even though I don't work in Minecraft very much, I would like to think I sort of intu intuitively know what's prettier a little bit better now. So I tried to go in loosely with the idea that it would be a cozy fall village and the concept was that it would be divided into four quadrants where there would be one hub quadrant like at the top corner where the warp would be that you would be like the entrance of the town and that would be like the elaborate section right that would be like the welcome this is a this is an experience you're walking through sort of section and then there'd be another quadrant on either side of like suburbs where you could live in a house and there'd be little shops would be so cute but less elaborate and then there'd be a rural quadrant where it would also be curated but it would be more like that fairwood vision where it'd be like farm or grasslands and wheat and nice ranch or whatever you know it'd be it'd be like a themed experience where you could come and live and chill out um and maybe i can think of adding like a pumpkin farm eventually but i really wasn't that interested in that so i set out to build a town and the concept was that i i picked a town in the plains biome because I wanted to not spend a lot of time flattening anything. I wanted to work with the environment that I was in rather than against it. And I wanted to be able to have access to like some natural resources nearby that I could build from. So I can mine those instead of having to buy every single brick that I'm using, right? Or every single block. And so I set to work. I started with the walls and the concept with the walls was it was gonna be like the litmus test of like how ornate I would be able to tolerate making these things. Um, I had no plans for anything other than very loosely like the quadrant system, but I knew I wanted the walls around everything to, you know, keep it cohesive and also make it so that you could travel along them, kind of like a public transport system. Maybe like a progressive enhancement could be adding mine carts around everything so you could travel around and have a scenic view of the whole town you know something like that but in the beginning it would just be a section where i could test to see like building style and how i liked it and stuff like that and the vibe um and i didn't want to force myself to do anything during this whole process right which normally i would have been like well just get the walls done get this done get this done before but i'm like no actually i'll do what i want and so i built some of the wall not all of it of course but just enough to get me started and then moved into building actual buildings right so i wanted to start with the elaborate quarter or yeah quadrant first like the warp location first because i thought it'd be nice to build out from there and i wanted the warp pretty pretty soon but here's the problem with all this okay here's the problem is that i am dyslexic okay and that's normally <laughs> that's normally not a problem in minecraft okay there's not a lot of reading you have to do in minecraft but the thing is that in these economy servers, there is paperwork and bureaucracy, right? And so when I filled out my paperwork <laughs> to get this town in the first place in the forums, I fundamentally misspelled the name, okay? It's supposed to be Pumpkin Vale, right? Like pumpkin, like a pumpkin. But I wrote Pumpkin, Pumpkin Vale. No second P, Pumpkin Vale. And so, I was like, I cannot believe I did this. So I asked the mods, I was like, hey, this was a mistake. Can you change it? They're like, no, we just had to follow your, we have to follow what you put in the in the application. And once it's done, it's like done. I was like, I guess it's pumpkin veil now. And pumpkin is kind of cute actually, like pumpkin instead of pumpkin, it's kind of cute. So it's like not the end of the world, right? It's not, It's I'm not gonna die over this. This is not, this is just an unfortunate little thing, but I'm not gonna die, right? And that's my mindset. I'm, like, I'm just gonna keep building Pumpkin Vale. 
the reason why I should say I picked pumpkin veil in the first place was that the warp slash pumpkin was not taken. Okay. There was no warp for pumpkin. There was one for melon. There was one for farm. I was like, what about pumpkin? So that's why I picked it. I didn't want to call the town pumpkin because I wanted it to be like, you know, whimsical or whatever. So I was like, pumpkin veil. But it was now pumpkin. I was like, okay, that's okay. We'll move on. So I'm building the main locations of like when you first spawn in, right? Okay, so you spawn in, in my vision, in like a sort of grand, almost like a cathedral or castle, but it's just sort of like a grand stall, if you will, like where you come in and you set the tone and there might be things like signs and rules and stuff later, but in the beginning, it should just be this sort of ornate thing, right? That sets the, the color palette and the, and the vibe. And so when you spawn in, I built that building, right? And that's like city hall you can think of. That's going to be like the origin that from which everything will come out from. And so the idea is once you spawn in, you're going to see like a vision of the village, right? So try to keep it open. You come out onto a main street, of course, a little fountain. Then I started putting in things like a little market area where players could theoretically come and sell some of their wares. They can rent out a stall, a small stall to sell like essentials or like hot items. Um, obviously, it'd be like town residents who would be the ones to rent out these stalls. And then I put a little area if you want to buy some some food from a little guy. And I put in a blacksmith and a, and a baker store and a little public horse stall thing as well where you could come park your horse. It's like I'm thinking about infrastructure. So I was like, where are you going to park your horse? in the horse stall of course um but the blacksmith shop and the baker shop those to me seem like essential things like one where you can buy your weapons and armor one where you can buy food and these are things that i'm thinking i could rent out or like sell the players to run but for now they could just be like little shop areas where you could come buy things you know in the meantime while we wait for people to show up because I haven't bought any or I haven't built any houses for them to live in yet, right? So I built up this entire area, okay, with all of the buildings that I thought were very cute. And they were all totally um, like I made them in the moment. They were not arbitrary, but not planned, okay? So I had a concept, but I didn't even really count blockage or whatever or anything. There's no math here because I am not good at it. So I was just like, let's just build whatever feels good. And it ended up looking pretty cute. And so the idea was that now that this area where the player would warp in was done, I bought the warp itself, right? Which wasn't free. You have to buy the warp. I did have enough money left over because the town itself did not eat up my whole um, winnings from that, from that maze thing. So I bought the, the warp and I was under the impression that you could just have the warp be any name really in your town um because you're just buying it and filling out a form and so i feel like this wasn't clear about how the warp system works in terms of like owning one so i i felt kind of extremely stupid when i put in the notes i'd like the warp to be warp pumpkin right just pumpkin um and then i came into the game and it was in fact slash pumpkin veil vale. pumpkin once again because i had misnamed the town it was now pumpkin and that's when i stopped playing <laughs> that's the i was like you know what i can't i can't emotionally handle this right now okay i came in here and i said i want warp pumpkin that was the base of the whole town and now i have warp pumpkin veil vale. the whole idea of the warp is that it's got to be something concise that the player could just go oh i want to go to uh, i want a pumpkin farm they will type in warp pumpkin and then happen upon my cute little town and explore from there. But nobody is going to type in pumpkin veil with pumpkin misspelled. So I was like, yeah, that's enough for me. That's enough Minecraft for now. I have achieved enough to where uh, little me would be happy at the build quality, I think, that I have made. And this is really just for me. So if you think it's butt ugly, you're probably right. But in the moment of building this, I was like, hmm. I have achieved something that I would be proud of. Little me would be proud of. And that's it. That's the end of this particular journey for now, right? It's not me saying I will never come back and play on 
warp pumpkin veil. You know, that really pisses me off that I have warp pumpkin veil, okay? Um, that's not me saying it's over. Like, maybe one day, once again, my friends will be like, hey, let's play Minecraft. You know, it happens every so often. We go in and out of phases. Usually Minecraft and Skyrim is what we're between. But next time we're at Minecraft, I'll probably be like, I want to build a town in Eco City Craft. And when that happens, unless they reset the server, I think I'm confident enough now in myself and my journey where I don't have to punish myself for being frustrated this time and just start over, right? I can go to Warp Pumpkin Vale and go from there. I can continue to expand it and be happy with my progress at that time and be happy with previous progress. Or if I'm not happy with it, I can just change it. Isn't that magical? That you can just change things and putting a block down doesn't mean it's stuck forever. These are re revelations that I have had personally that took a long time for me to get there, okay? And these might be things that other people would, would be like, yeah, duh, you know? Like it's just sort of, these are known things. Like I'm not inventing anything. I'll admit it. I am not inventing anything by realizing games should be fun and that nothing is permanent, but took a long time for me okay and so that's the point of this really this whole journey this whole this whole story is that sometimes sometimes games can be fun and that if you're not having fun and if you are playing uh call of duty for example and you're in a lobby and you're yelling racial slurs at people because you're so mad at your own performance at this game and all you want to do is get to the next rank or whatever and you just suck and you're having a horrible time why are you playing that why are you playing that if you're so stressed, you know? Or me and my friends, we play Overwatch all the time. And we just get mad. And people in these lobbies get mad. I feel like I don't get that mad. But people in these lobbies will say the most horrible, heinous things to you in this chat. If you're playing, like, competitive or even just quick play. And I'm just thinking, why are you playing this game to be a hater? Why not play a game where you feel good, you know? Or you... Why, why make it stressful? I'm at the point in my life now where there's enough stress coming from everywhere else and my game should not add to it, you know? They should, they should relieve it. That's the point of it. And I'm just saying, I'm not playing right now, but if enough people were like, I'd buy a plot in your town, not Cecily or something in the comments or to DM me on Twitter or something, I might just build more houses. So <laughs> let me know if you're interested.